I've had some good days. Oh, yes. I've had some hills to climb. Hallelujah. I've had some weary days. Hallelujah. And some sleepless nights. But when In the meantime, somebody shout in the meantime. In the meantime. Woo. That the sky became black with clouds and wind. And there was a heavy rain. And Ahab rode away um, and went to Israel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran up into Ahab, of Ahab to the entrance of Israel. Yes. Now let's look. Stay right there. Look, look at verse number 45. And now it happened in the meantime. It's underlined for a reason. Now it happened in the meantime. In the meantime. 
in the mean? Is, is it anybody here living in the meantime? Now tell us, what do you mean that you're living in the meantime? You, you feel like God is going to do something. You, you know that God is going to do something. You, you sense God is doing something. But right now, you're in the meantime. Nothing is manifesting. Nothing is happening now. But you feel like God is getting ready to do something. And the elders all the time, no, God is getting ready to do something. But nothing is happening yet. Is it anybody here that's living in the meantime? For the next few minutes, that's what I'm going to preach about. I'm going to preach about in the meantime. You may be seated. In the meantime. In the meantime. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to break bread. Your word declares that heaven and earth will pass away. But your word shall never pass away. I thank you for this opportunity to preach and teach me. To these your people. Yes, God. Anoint you. these lips made of clay. You, Help me to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Strengthen my body. I want to preach this word like I've been preaching it ever since Friday. Yes. I, I want to preach this word with power, wisdom, and, and demonstration. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Yes, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Yes. And we all shout it. Amen. Amen. Door keepers, you may be seated. Amen. Uh, thank you. Doorkeepers, you may be seated. Thank God for our doorkeepers, Deacon, future Deacon Jones, and to Kayla and Kayla. Amen. 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 Thank you. In the meantime, Amen. Ephesians chapter number one, verse number three states this. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Uh -huh in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, what this scripture means is every blessing that the Lord will give you has already been deposited in your spiritual bank account. Thank you, Minister Passion. Every spiritual blessing, every blessing, Every blessing, every blessing that the Lord is ever going to give you while you're here on earth has already been deposited in your spiritual bank account. In other words, it's already done. Your healing is already done. Your breakthrough is already done. What you are praying about is all it, it, it's all already done. Pastor Colors, how is it that it's already done? God is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Before the foundation of the world, God already knew your life story. Yes. <laughs> Before the world was ever created, even created, God had already had your plan for your life in his mind. Yes, 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 yes. And he said, all right, I am God. I know, Sister Loretta, how your story is going to start, mm -hmm. and I know how your story is going to end. Yes, and I know everything that you're going to need in the meantime. Yes, yes. <laughs> So God said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to already put these blessings in Louise's spiritual bank account. Deborah's spiritual bank account. May's spiritual bank account. Regina's spiritual bank account. Sing's spiritual bank account. It's already in your spiritual bank account. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed E.D. Us with all spiritual blessings yeah. in heavenly places, in the spiritual realm, yeah, yeah, in yeah. Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may ask Pastor Colors, well, how can I make an earthly withdrawal from my spiritual bank account uh -huh. while I'm living uh -huh. in the meantime? Yeah, yeah. I know wonderful things from God is in store for me, yeah. but nothing is happening. Yeah. 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 
The answer to your question is to pray to God. I know that sounds very elementary, but you all know that I go very deep. <laughs> so my first point is prayers to God. I did not say pray to God or prayer to God. I said prayers to God because you have to pray more than one time. You have to pray to God. Don't pray to the creation. But pray to the creator. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Do not pray to the universe. Like many people say now, I'm praying to the universe. Why in the world are you going to pray to the universe instead of praying to the God of the universe? Don't pray to the universe, but pray to God himself. So my first point is prayers to God. One definition, I gave you all this definition years ago. One definition of prayer. Please take notes if y'all will. One definition of prayer is, prayer is the relational communication with God. Yeah. That's one definition of prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer is relational communication with God. Mm -hmm. Prayer is relational. Somebody shout relational. relational. Communication with. Somebody shout with. With. With, with God. Yeah. Why did I say relational? Because it's hard to pray to someone or communicate to someone with whom you do not have a relationship. Yes. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's why some people find it difficult to pray for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Because they do not have an intimate relationship with the Father through Christ Jesus. Yeah. When you have an intimate relationship or when you just have a relationship, period, with someone, it's easy to talk to them. Yeah. It's easy for me to communicate with Lady C because we have a relationship. Yeah. Now, I must admit, I might not have the best uh, method of communication, but at least I communicate is because I have a relationship with Lady C so I can talk to her. It's easy. We can lay in the bed and just be talking and we can sit up in the living room and just be talking because of hours upon hours because I have a relationship with Lady C. And the same way with God because I have a relationship I'm on somebody. Because I have a relationship with God, I can talk to him. I find myself sometimes driving down the road, Elder Jones, and I'm I say, well, God, I'm going to pray to you until I get to the circuit can after. Then I find myself pulling up in the parking lot at work, Sister Loretta, still talking to the Lord. The radio is off because I have an intimate relationship with the Father. Sometimes when, 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 when Lacey and I, before we go to bed, we pray to collectively, and we find ourselves praying for 30 minutes because we have have an intimate relationship with the Father. And when you have a relationship with the Father, you can communicate with Him. Pray is com relational communication with God. Notice it's with God and not to God. Mm. You run your mouth too much. You do all the talking. You do all the talking. Get your glasses. You get all the talking. But you make sure that you give God an opportunity to speak to you. Hallelujah. You make sure you get an opportunity to, so you can hear from God. That's one definition of fast. A prayer. Prayer. That's one definition of prayer. A second definition of prayer. I gave you all this definition um, during our 14 day fast. But I want to share and explain this definition again for those of you who probably missed it. This is very important. I want you to get this because you, if, if you get this, you will understand my whole sermon. Uh -huh. Another definition of prayer is, you're doing good, Sister Jackie. <laughs> prayer, <laughs> prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Prayer is earthly license yes. for heavenly interference. House Pillows, please explain this. I will. Genesis 1. Is this is almost going to be reviewed for some of you, but I'm going somewhere. Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 26 through 27. Elder Jones. Genesis chapter number 1, verses 26 through 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the sea. Let them have dominion. 
Say, read that part three times for me, Elder. <laughs> and let them have dominion. Yes, sir. Over the fish of the sea. Yeah. And over the fowl of the air. Yeah. And over the cattle. Mm -hmm. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Yes, sir. My so God created man in his own image, mm -hmm. in his image, in the image of God created he him, male yeah. and female created he them. Yeah, thank you, Elder. Let's go back to verse number 26 when it says, let them have dominion. Yes, yes. God yes. said, let mm -hmm. man have dominion yes. over the fish of the sea, over the cattle of the fowls of the air, over the cattle of the field, all over all that. In other words, God was saying, I want man to rule God created earth. God created earth and man to reflect heaven and hell. Yes, yes, yes. So earth should be a reflection of heaven. Yes, and we should be a reflection of God. Yes, yes, I'm going yes. to rest. Stay with me. Now God, according to John chapter number 4, verse number 24, now God is a spirit. Yes. So if God is a spirit, that means he rules in the spiritual realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He created man, mm -hmm. us, mankind, mm -hmm. to have authority. Yes, 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 yes. To have dominion yes. here on earth. Yes, yes, I'm going yes, somewhere. Stay with me now. Yes, God created man, yes. put a portion of his spirit yes, yes, in man's spirit. Wrapped man's spirit with flesh, yes. blew the breath of life into man's nostrils, and man became a living soul. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to swear. Yes. Now, let me put all of these or both of these definitions together so you can really see where I'm going. Let's go to the first, first um, definition of prayer. Prayer is relational communication with God. Okay. How can we relate to God? We relate to God from our spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Once you got saved, God entered your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. And now from your spirit, you can communicate with God. Yes, yes, yes. God relates to you from your spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Now, I told you all that God rules in the spiritual realm, but he wants us to rule in the earthly realm. Yes, yes. But I told you that earth should be a reflection of heaven. So how in the world can earth reflect heaven if God, who is a spirit, is ruling in the spiritual realm and we are flesh, we are spirit in flesh, and we down here on earth? That's why I told you God lives in your spirit. Yes, so yes. that's how he communicates with us in our spirit. Yes, yes. Now, here we go. I, I want you to get this. Now, second definition of prayer is prayer is the earthly license for heavenly interference. Now, when we want God to do something here on earth, when we need God to do something here on earth, because God is not flesh, he's spirit. He rules in the spiritual realm. He resides in your spirit man. But in order for him to do something down here on earth, hallelujah, he has to get man permission. When he said, let them have dominion, God said, I'm going to rule heaven. Man, you're going to rule earth. And man, since I am spirit and not flesh, anytime you want me to do something, you have to give me permission. You have to give me permission through prayer to come down to earth through you. Yes. To make every blessing that I have stored up for you in the spiritual realm yes. to manifest in the earthly realm. Yes. 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 Oh, are y'all with me so far? Yes. So, so when you pray, you are given God permission. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You are given God permission to interfere in earthly matters. Yes. Let, let's, let's, let's look at something. Jesus, Jesus. Isaiah chapter number 65, verse number 24. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
And before Elder Jones read that, I, I really want to say this. Hallelujah. Anytime we pray, Lord, and you pray from your spirit, you become heaven's point of contact. God needs a man that he can work through. So when you pray to the Father, you become heaven's point of contact. God said, I can do something through you. Because you prayed and gave me permission. I was waiting for you to pray. Y'all with me? I was waiting for you to pray. And since I heard you pray, every spiritual blessing that I have in the spiritual realm with your name on it, I can release it down here to her. Elder Jones, bring this from it before I get happy. Yeah. Yeah. That before they come, yeah. my bless you. Yeah. God, and while they are yet speaking, I'm with you. Yeah. 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 This side about the shout. Yeah. So let me work on this yeah. side. Before they call, they call. Yeah. Before, I call. before yeah. you call, yeah. Yeah. God yeah. said, I will answer. Yes, before you even pray, yeah. the answer is already in the spiritual realm. Yeah. The spirit of oh, your blessing is already in your spiritual bank account. It's already done before you pray. But God said, I'm waiting for you to pray. I'm looking for you, man, to pray so I can release it. And while they are yet speaking, and while you still praying, I'm listening. And God said, because you're praying and you gave me earthly license, to do a hell in the fear, I can do something down here on the earth. So if you want your spiritual blessings that's in your spiritual bank account to manifest down here on earth, God said pray. And through you, I will bring heaven to earth. Through you. Because he gave me permission. Somebody shout, in the meantime, pray to God. Say it again, say, in the meantime, pray to God. Now allow me, I'm going to work this a little bit. Allow me to relate this to the text. Of course, there's no text without context. Therefore, allow me to put 1 Kings chapter number 18, verses 41 through 46 in the prophet said Ahab became the king of Israel. Uh -huh. Ahab was not a good king. Matter of fact, he was the most evil king that Israel ever had at that time. Ahab married Jezebel. And Jezebel worshipped the fertility god of the Canaanites. She convinced, put the logo on that for me, Sister Jackie. She convinced Ahab to worship Baal. Yeah. Keep in mind, I told you that Baal is the God, little G, yeah. of fertility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she convinced, Jezebel convinced Ahab, who was a, initially a believer in God, mm -hmm. but because he married somebody unequally yoked, mm -hmm. right. she convinced him yeah. to come over to her religion. Yeah. To worship Baal. Yeah. And since he was king, he said, what I will do, I will build an altar for Baal, and I will also put the altar of Baal in a temple of Baal. So he, he set up an altar and also built a temple of Baal and put it in Samaria. Yeah. And out of the blue, yeah. here comes this raggedy dress. Not smelling so good, prophet. Now, a prophet in the Bible showed up because something was spiritually wrong with God's people. Now, let's look at what this prophet Elijah said to Ahab. I'm going somewhere. First Kings chapter number 17, verse number one. Hallelujah. First Kings 17, one. Thank you. Elder Jones. And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, Gilead, and unto Ahab 
as the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Living before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. That was on the one move on this side. <laughs> 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 I gotta get my elder Mike and some black. Where your glasses at, elder? I can see. Okay, okay, all right, you can see. All right, all right. So Elijah told the prophet, I can pray, I joke with elders. My both my elders like that. They'll get me out of church. But, but the prophet Elijah told the king Ahab, there will be no dew, no rain in Israel. Three and a half years later, the next chapter. First Kings chapter number 18, verse number 1, look what he told the king. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, yeah. saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. So in verse number seven, um, chapter number 17, verse number 1, God said, No rain. No rain. No, no dew. Uh -huh. Then verse number, chapter number 18, verse number 1, he said, I will send rain. And in between these, this chapter is a period of three and a half years. And you must ask yourself, why didn't God send rain to Samaria for three and a half years? I'm going to show you why. Y'all are so great. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter number 11, verse 13 through 17. Listen at what Elder Jones is about to read. Elder Jones. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, mm -hmm. and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Yeah. That I will give you the rain of your land in due season, mm -hmm. the first rain and the latter rain, yeah. that thou mayest gather in thy corn yeah. and thy wine and thine oil. Yeah. Yeah. And I will send grass in thy field for thy cattle, mm -hmm. that thou mayest eat and be full. My God, be full. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, hold on before you read this, Elder. Now, she has read so far, God said, now, if you worship me, if you worship me, I send rain. Hallelujah. He'll send your best. He'll send the rain so you can have corn and livestock and all that. But God said, first, you got to worship me. Look at this, Sister Elder. But look at verse number 16. Now, here's what we want to take a little turn. Take heed to yourselves yeah. that your heart be not deceived. Mm. Then ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Mm. Yeah. And then the Lord wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven. Uh -huh. He did, he did. Come on. That man. there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly mm -hmm. from out the good land. So God said, now if you turn and worship other gods, I stop the rain. Wow. Isn't that what Ahab did? He first initially started worshiping God. He was worshiping God, Yahweh. God was sending rain. But the moment he married Jezebel and he converted over to worship Baal and yeah. set up an altar in a temple in Samaria, he led the Israelites into idolatry. Oh the king yes. led the Israel. You got to be careful yeah. who's leading you. Yeah. The king led the Israelites into idolatry. Yeah. They now are worshiping Baal, the god liturgy of fertility mm. for the Canaanites. Yeah. And God said, All right, you think. Mm. That Baal is God. I'm going to show you who's God. Yeah, yeah, Since you yeah. turn and worship Baal, mm -hmm. I am the God Almighty. Yes. I'm going to shut up heaven yes, 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 yes. and stop the rain. Yes, because you followed other gods. Can we just read that? Yes, yes. That's why God shut up heaven. Yes. The prophet showed up to the king Ahab and said, Listen, I got a word from the Lord for you. Because you did that, God is going to shut up heaven. Now, I want, I want you to see something. I'm still on my point about prayers to God. Uh -huh. I'm going somewhere. Look at James chapter number 5, mm -hmm. verse 16 through 18. James 5, 16 through 18. 
James 5, 16 through 18. Confess your faults one to another uh -huh. and pray one for another yeah. that ye may be healed. Mm -hmm. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You got to be righteous. You got to be in right standing with God. And if you're in right standing with God, your prayers will become effective. Yeah. Next verse, Elder Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. That's Elijah. Uh -huh. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Yeah. And it rained not on the earth by a space of three years and six months. That's three years. That's three years. <laughs> <laughs> and he prayed again. Yeah. And the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. Yeah. Don't miss this. Connect all of this together. Mm -hmm. The word of God said in Deuteronomy chapter number, uh, what was that? Um, what I just read? 13, 13. 11 verses 13 through 17. Now, if you worship God, God said, if you worship me, I send rain. Yeah. The time you worship other gods, I'm going to stop rain. Right. Okay. The prophet Elijah showed up to the king Ahab and said, listen, God is about to shed up heaven. Wow. But then when we read James, the book of James tells us that Elijah prayed yes, he did. that the Lord would shed heaven. Yeah. And then he prayed again yeah. that he will open up heaven. Yeah. Now, what did he pray? Amen. He prayed the word of God. He Elijah knew the Torah. Mm -hmm. He knew the Pentateuch, as I should say. The Pentateuch. He knew the Pentateuch. He knew the first five books of the Bible. Deuteronomy is one of the first five books of the Bible. He knew the word of God. And he knew what the word of God said. So he said, in order. For God to shut heaven yeah. and open heaven, I must pray right. what he has already declared. Don't be clear. He prayed Deuteronomy chapter number 11 verse 13 through 17. God will only release to earth what he has declared from him. Yeah. Hear me now. God will only release to earth what he has declared from heaven. Yeah. So when you pray what God has decreed in his word, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Blessing. But you got to pray his word. When you pray the word of God, we're going back to 1 Kings, don't jump, 1 Kings 17, 1, Jacket. When you pray to the word of God, Brother Jones, you have the authority to shut up heaven and close heaven. Y'all got to be ready for this. When you pray, when you are in right standing with God, and you pray the word of God, out of your mouth, through your prayer life, you have the authority to shed up heaven and close heaven. Because God is looking for somebody that can be his point of contact. That's why it's not an option if we should pray. You need to pray. We want God's will to be done here on earth, but nobody praying. We want God's will to be done here on earth, but we don't know his word. But once you start praying his word, God said, because you pray. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was the, of the inheritance of Gilead, said to Ahab, ask the Lord. Now he said this. As the Lord God of Israel, Leo, this came out of his mouth. He prayed this. Before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to whose word? In, ultimately, God's word, but it had to come out of Elijah's mouth. So out of Elijah's mouth, he had the authority through prayer to shed him. Because God needs a point of contact 
He needs a human yeah. that he can do his will through. Yeah. So in verse in chapter number um, 17, verse number 1, from um, Elijah's mouth, he shut up heaven. Yeah. Chapter number 18, verse number 1. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Chapter number 18, verse number 1. Yeah. And it come on now. And it came to pass at the middle day that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Elijah, I need you to say this. This needs to come out of your mouth. You need to pray this. Go show thyself to Ahab, and, and I will send rain upon the earth. So from out of his mouth, in chapter number 18, verse number one, he opened up heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chapter number 17, verse number one, because he prayed, he had the authority to shut up heaven. First Kings chapter 18, verse number 1, because he prayed, he had the authority to open up heaven. Yes. Yes. Mm. Because he prayed the word of God. Yes. Yes. You got the authority to pray. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. This is so good. I told myself, when I said I feel like we're, I'm going to ask you to roll yes. We have the authority, Mother Norman. Yes. If we pray and be in a right relationship with God, we have the authority to shut up heaven and we have the authority to open up heaven. We have the authority to bind and we have the authority to lose. You got to pray the word. When you pray the word of God. Now, I got a, wrote a few things here that's related to my sermon, but it might take me in a different route. I want to know how many of y'all desire more of God. Yes. Yes. If you desire more of God, I need you to stand on your feet. Yes. I really need you to stand on your feet. Yes. You just raise your hand, sister, because you're going to have to do this. <laughs> Matthew chapter number five, verse number six says this. Now, this is how you should pray. Because mm. God will only do what he has declared from heaven. Hallelujah. It cannot be what you want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are y'all understanding me? Yes. It got to be what God wants and what he said in his word. Yes. And since all of you are standing because you want more of God, yes. God said in his word, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes. Now, when you begin to pray and you say, Father, your word declares. Yes. In Matthew chapter number five, verse number six, if I want more of you, if I desire more of you, you will fill me over your spirit. Yes. Now that's how you pray. That's how you pray the word of God. Sit down. I don't want to get y'all too happy. Now, how many of you desire healing in your body? Stand up on your feet. Now, I'm showing you the word of God so you can know how to pray. Exodus chapter number 15, verse number 26. Elder Jones. And he said, if thou would diligently yes. hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and will do that which is right yeah. in his sight, yeah. and will give ear to uh -huh. his commandments, yeah. and keep all oh. his statutes, Come on now. I will put none, none of these diseases upon thee, <laughs> which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am. The Lord that healed it. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Healed it. Hallelujah. God said, I can hear you because my word said. So when you begin to pray, you pray this. And you say, God, your word declares. And Exodus chapter number 15, verse number 26, that you are the God that heals me. So God, you are obligated to fulfill your word. So God, I need a healer in my body, God. You see that. And when you pray that, you will open up heaven. And you'll shut up heaven. Now, how many of you need a better job? Yeah. I didn't have to tell y'all to stand up there, y'all stood up. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you how to pray. Second Thessalonians chapter number three, verse number ten. Uh -huh. You have it. You don't even want to feel like clicking. <laughs> we have the Jones. For even when ye were even, for even when we were with you. Yeah. This we commanded you. Yeah. That if any would not work, neither should he. Now, let me show you how you pray this. God, you see that I'm having a hard time making ends meet. Amen. 
And your word declares that if I don't work, I don't eat. But God, I'm working, but I still can't eat. But God, if you could just open up me another door for me to get a better job so I can meet, hallelujah, the needs through your will so I can eat, so I can live. Because your word declares that you will supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. God, I need to eat. If you want me to do your will, I need some food on my table. I need, that's how you pray the word of God. I'm going to give you one more, then I have to hasten to my clothes. I don't have mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, how many of you desire a house? Now, that's for me and Lady City and yes. nobody else. Hallelujah. Now, we desire a house. That's what we want. Because I'm getting tired of living in an apartment. Hallelujah. We're spending too much money on rent. Yes. Come on, cousin, Billy Boy, yes. that I could be putting towards the house. That yes. we can be putting towards the house. Yes. I can't shout like I want to shout. Because I got neighbors underneath me. Yes. I can't yell like I need to yell. Because I got neighbor above me. But God, we need a house. So I can run around. So I can run around the house. Run around the yard. God, I'm doing your will. And your word declares. I got to use this word. This is Romans chapter number um, 6, verse number 10 through 11. This is for me and you, ladies. Say, read, elder. And Mm -hmm. When the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which thou swear unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities uh -huh. which thou buildest not. Uh -huh. yeah. And houses full of all good things. Come on now. Yeah. This is the, this is the, one of the promises because we are the seeds of Abraham. Yeah. To the God said, I give you houses. Yeah. You didn't think. Y'all not shouting. Read out the continue read. Yeah. Which thou feelest not, uh -huh. and wells did, which thou diggest not. Woo! Vineyards and olive trees, yes, sir. thou plantest not, yeah. when thou shalt have eaten and be full. God said, I'll let somebody else do the work. Yeah. I'll let somebody else have going for you. Yeah. So you can get the right credit score. Yeah. So you can get the right letter. And what I was just about, that you can get a more discount. You got to pray the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are y'all all right? Somebody shall pray the word of God. Now to our text. Let's uh -huh. go to 1 Kings chapter number 18, yeah. verses 41. Jack, and this is going to be the new international version. Okay. Elder Jones, read this for me. 1 Kings chapter number 18, uh, verse number 41. New International Version. There you go. And Elijah said to Ahab, mm -hmm. Go eat and drink, yes. for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Yes. 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 Uh, don't, 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 don't move yet. Don't move yet. Okay. okay, so the first point we need to pray or prayers to God. Yes. And we know that God needs a person yes. that he can work through. Yes. Yes. And you have to pray the word of God. Yes. When you pray the word of God out of your mouth, Sister Regina, you have the authority, the authority. come on now, to open heaven yes. and yes. You have the authority to speak yes. to the mountain. Yes. And the mountain God, because you don't speak the word of God. Yes. 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 Now, Elijah prayed the word of God. He prayed that the Lord would shut heaven unto yes. and he prayed that the Lord would open heaven. Yes. And in our text, cousin scene, it said that he told Ahab to go and drink for there is the sound of heavy rain. King yes. James Version, might not be referenced King James Version. Yes. And for I hear the sound of the abundance. Abundance. Yes. 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 been dry if they've been a drought for three and a half years. But Elijah prayed to God and said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. My second point is proximity to God. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor what do you mean proximity to God? Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all got stupid big. Now, let's go to first, verse 43. That's my second point, proximity to God. We're going to talk about prayers to God, now proximity to, to God. Verse number 43. Jacob, we're going to skip a little bit. Now, Elijah said, I hear the sound uh -huh. of the abundance room. Uh -huh. <laughs> he told his servant to go look at the sky. And he said, the servant said, I don't see anything. Yeah. Yeah. But Elijah heard the sound. Yeah. Woo! 
But when he told his servant to go look, he said, it's not even a cloud in the sky. Yeah. Verse number 46, when we get later on down to verse number 46, it says that the, uh, verse number 46, okay, 45, let's go back one verse, 45. Yes. Meanwhile, the sky grew, yes, it grew, yes, it grew. Yes. One translation of the Bible say became black. Uh -huh. But when Elijah heard the sound, yes, it wasn't a cloud in the sky. Yeah. 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 Pastor Colors, what, what are you trying to get me to see? When you pray to God, uh -huh. prayer brings you in close proximity yes. to God. Yes. Yes. In other words, you will hear things where other people yeah. can't hear. Yeah. Yeah. You can see things where other people yeah. can't see. Yeah. You can feel things where other people can't feel. Yeah. Because you pray to God, Sister Loretta. And God said, every time you pray to me, I'll bring you closer to me. I'll bring you in close proximity to me. And I'll share to you my secret. I'll let you hear things where the natural man cannot hear. I'll let you see things that the sinners cannot see. Oh, oh, and oh, you are in close proximity. Are y'all all right? Sister Loretta, he said, I hear the of the norm of the abundance of rain, but the man, his servant, said, Wait, Elijah, it's not a cloud in the sky. What do you hear? Because I don't hear that. Elijah said, Because I pray, because I pray, it's already done in the spiritual realm. I hear it in the spirit, but although it never showed up in the natural, I hear it in the spirit. So in the meanwhile, y'all, or in the meantime, you need to get in close proximity to God. You need to pray. And when you pray the word of God, God said, I'll draw you close. That's why you got to feel it. That everything is going to be all right. Because everything will be all right. God said, I'll bring you closer to me because I want you to feel that I'm going to make everything all right. I said, I'm going to make everything all right. Let's go to verse number 42, Sister Jackie. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Read Elder Jones. Hey, so Ahab went off to eat and drink. Yeah. But Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, mm -hmm. bent down to the ground, yeah. and put his face between his knees. All right, so right there, don't move. So we're talking about prayers to God in point of one. We're talking about proximity to God. Mm -hmm. Now, this that was the second point. My third point this morning is going to be position before God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God. You've got to get in the right position. All right, let, let, let me break this down so you can really understand. Let's go back to my first verse 43. Justin, in the Bible day, in the Bible days, they didn't have the luxuries that the ladies have today during childbirth. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the table. They didn't have all what y'all got mm -hmm. when y'all deliver baby. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that during the time. So what a lady had to do, she had to squat mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. Put her face between her knees mm -hmm. and squat and get in this position mm -hmm. to give birth to a baby. Mm -hmm. Although she had labor pains, mm -hmm. mm, if she wanted to give birth to the baby, Elder Jones, mm -hmm. she had to get in the right position. She had to get in the right position to give birth to, what's what that, to what was in the inside of her. Pastor what are you saying? Elijah had to get in the position yeah. of travail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Woo! This is travail, travail like he was even birthed to a baby. My God. Yes. My God. My God. Mm. He had to get in the right position. Yes. He had to keep on praying. Yes. He had to keep on pushing. Yes. Woo! He said, God, I know what I feel in my spirit. Yes. God, I know what I sense yes. in my spirit. Yes. God, I know what I hear in the spirit. Yes. But God says this yes. thing haven't manifested yet. Yes. Let me get in the right position. Yes. Let me get in the right position before you, and I'm gonna keep on praying in this position until something happens. Yes. Maybe, maybe you will understand, cause y'all looking at me like I'm funny. 
Maybe you'll understand this. In my younger years, Elder Jones, I used to say this, push. That means pray until something happens. Mm, if nothing is happening in your life and you know what God has said, you got to keep on pushing. Some of you praying and some of you saying nothing is happening, but you got to keep on pushing. The bigger the baby yes, is, hey, hey. the harder the birth is. Hey, hey, hey. You are getting ready to give birth to something so big. Yes. But God said the reason it's taking so long because you ain't pushing. You're not praying until something happens. You want to see something happen. But God said you got to keep on praying. Hallelujah. You got you to gotta get in the right position. Tell your neighbor, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Yes. I'm about to close. Now, verse number, verse, verse number 44. Verse number 44. Because y'all, you got to get in the right position. Some of you pray one time and give up. But when you give a birth to a baby, mm, although you have a labor pass, although the baby hasn't showed up yet, you got to stay in that position before God. Let's look at verse number 44. Let me see, let, let's see something. No, let's go. Read, read, Elder Jones. The seventh time the servants reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. Uh -huh. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops. Thank you. One translation of the Bible, we read this in the New King James Version, says, prepare your chariot. Yes, yes, yes. Prepare your chariot. My fourth point, I'm going to let y'all go. My fourth point is preparation from God. Yes, yes. <laughs> you got to start making room. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you you just got to start preparing yourself for your answer. Yes. Hallelujah. Whatever you're praying about, whatever you're asking God to do, God said, prepare yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. God said, I want to see you make room. Because faith without works is dead. If you're praying for a house, I want to see you get your credit right. If you're praying for a man or a woman or a husband or a wife, I want to see yourself fix yourself up. Hallelujah. Start acting like you're already in there. You got to start preparing yourself. No problem here. Some of you are praying, but you haven't prepared. And it's a bad thing when you get the promise, but you don't have a prepared for the promise. And the promise becomes a disaster because you have not prepared. But I'm looking for somebody to hear a true friendship church and say, I'm getting ready to prepare myself for my blessing. I'm getting ready. Now, I'm about to close. So, first point, you got to pray to God. Second, it's proximity to God. Third, position before God. Fourth, preparation from God. And before I close, I want to make sure that you understand my sermon. I know it seems like nothing is happening in your life right now. However, you know and you feel and you sense and you hear that God is about to do something in your life. Yeah. That means you are living in the meantime. Yeah. In the meantime, you need to pray to God. Yeah. Prayer will bring you in close proximity to God. Yeah. Stay in your position of travailing in the spirit yeah. and prepare for your answer. Yeah. And then I'm about to give you my last point. Elder Jones, verse number 45. Meanwhile, yes, sir. the sky grew black with clouds. Yeah. The wind rolled. Yeah. A heavy rain started falling, and Ahab rolled off to Jezreel. Come on. So my fifth point, I'm about to close. My fifth point is promise of God. Mm. When you pray to God, when you get in close proximity to God, when you get in the right position before God, when you prepare for your answer, God said, now you can receive the promise. Don't miss this. In verse number 45, Elder Jones just read that he that the rain started falling. And God said, if you turn back to me, I send the rain. Hallelujah. And God said, if you pray and you pray the word of God, get in close proximity, God said, I'll make sure that you receive the promise. 
And is there anybody here? I'm about to close. Is there anybody here that's like me that said, Pastor, I'm living in the meantime, but I want to receive the promise. I want to receive everything that God has in store for me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, last point. Elder Charles, let's go to the last verse. Let's go to the verse number 46. Read, Elder. The power of the Lord came on Elijah, and tucking his cloak in his belt, into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Now, don't miss this. The New King James Version let us know that the power of the Lord, at first Elijah told Ahab, told his servant to go tell Ahab to go. The rain is coming. But Elijah got so excited about the promise of God. Why Eli why Ahab was riding on his horses. The prophet Elijah said, let me get my robe. Because that's what he had on. Tuck it in my belt and let me start running. Because I'm excited about receiving the promise. The Bible said that he outran the horses. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do. I'm excited what God is about to do. God is about to open up. before God. I'm going to prepare myself and then I'm going to receive the promise because God is getting ready to do it. You got to speak it like it's already done. I said God is getting ready to do it. I said God is getting ready to do it. I said God is getting ready to do it. Look at somebody say it's already done. I said look at somebody say it's already done. In the meantime, in the meantime, he's able, y'all. I say he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. I say he's able. I said he's able. I said he's able. I said he's able. Not Father, all standing all over the sanctuary. Brother Jimmy, you can come. Can we pray together? I'm living in the meantime. I'm living in the meantime. 
doesn't feel like nothing is happening right now. But once we pray, hallelujah, God will bring heaven to earth. Let's pray. Can you do me a favor? If you don't feel comfortable about grabbing anybody by the hand, took somebody on their shoulder. Hallelujah! What two or three are touching in the green. That's his word. He will be in the midst. The Bible also let us know if any one or two touch and agree and establish or decree anything, yes. it will be established. I don't know what you need from the Lord, but if we pray and we pray right, come on, somebody. God will manifest Himself in your life. Father, we thank you because we know that you are able. You are the God that sits high and looks low. You are the God that answer our prayers. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we are calling upon you because you are sitting in heaven looking down on earth. And we need you, Father. We need you, Father. We need you, Father. We need you. We need you to show yourself mighty. We need you to show yourself strong. Your word declares that you'll be a present help in a time of trouble. And we find ourselves in trouble in time. And we need your help. We need your help. You are the God that heal us. Heal us. You are the God who can set us free. Set us free. You are the God that make every crooked place straight and well place move. So, Father, make a way. We thank you. Give us more of you and less of us. Stir up the gift that you have placed in the inside of us. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. And we declare that it's already done. We're going to believe. We're going to receive it like it's already done. In Jesus' name, we pray. We all shout it. Amen. Come on, give God the praise. Come on. Come on, give him the praise. Just what he said, he would do. Yeah.